Hello, I'm Alfa Zio. I'd like to talk to you about leading effective teaching teams and some of the practical ideas we can put into practice in that regard. I think we've got a fair bit of intuitive knowledge about what works and doesn't work with teaching teams. And um, it's good to just start with that. I think we all know that if we do that sort of stuff well and, and get uh, uh, the team well prepared and well managed and we pay attention to what's going on, Life's better for everybody concerned. We know that intuitively, it makes sense. It's not, it's not uh, too difficult a concept to grasp. Um, but really, you know, we really need to emphasize that this is an act of enlightened self-interest because not only is it a reasonable thing to do for the teaching team, but it actually, a well-organized course and a well-structured teaching team improves the quality of students' learning. Students tell us that because they have a consistent and coherent experience. And generally it's reflected in their evaluations of our courses and teaching. So, it's in our interest to get this right. Um, now, it's important also to emphasise there isn't one special right way of leading and managing a course, um, but there are general practice, good practice principles that I think we can learn from and generalise across courses um, that will work uh, in, 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 most course, in most course environments. That's the good news. There are general, generalisable, learnable ideas we can use here. And the good, the good news is that it's simple Important stuff, simple, but it's, it's not rocket science in the sense that it'll be too hard to grasp. It'll be well within our intuitive understanding. And probably also important to say, given that we are scholars and, 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 and scientists, that the research supports pretty much what we know intuitively to be the case. We've done a, a, a quite a large number of studies now in this area, and we find that a teaching team that is well prepared, and we'll talk about what that means a bit later, generally results in a course that's much more effectively managed. That makes perfectly sense. The preparation leads to good management. And that the effectiveness of the preparation and the course management is strongly reflected in evaluations of the teaching team members' satisfaction and also their perceptions of how effective the course is. Um, so there's a really strong path of uh, associations where good preparation leads to good management, which leads to good outcomes. And it's good to have our intuitions confirmed by the research. So this is something well worth investing in. So, if that's what the research is telling us, what does this mean in practice? Well, if only it was a magical world and we could say, you know, teams meet and therefore they're formed. I think um, we all know that's not the case. We know that good teaching teams need to be intentionally developed and intentionally formed. And, and that's part of the job of being uh, a course convener. But I would suggest that there may be a mindset change that might help us embrace the tasks of teaching team development and that, what I would suggest is perhaps consider changing gears. And by changing gears, I mean thinking about your role a little differently. Rather than thinking about you just being a course convener, consider the idea of being a course leader. And if you were thinking of yourself as a course leader, what else would fall into your ambit of responsibility? What is a leader responsible for that a convener may not be? What, what extra possibilities does that uh, give rise to in your head? Generally speaking, in terms of the teaching team development, if you are thinking about yourself as a course leader, then as we were showing from our research slides earlier, the key domains of action, the big four we call them, are processes for preparing your teaching team, processes for managing the team and the course as you go through the uh, semester or the teaching period. And as you go through that semester and teaching period, having structured processes for quality improvement and quality feedback, and also uh, enabling the team to develop themselves as a teaching team and also the individual members of that team. Big, the big four areas of, of investment, if you like, for a course leader, which will pay off in terms of uh, enhanced evaluations and improved student learning. So let's look at those in a little bit more detail. Let's look at the front end, for example. Course and teaching team preparation. What are the types of processes that we can use to better prepare our teaching teams? Well, they're really things that you probably do already, but perhaps if you did a bit more systematically, you might find uh, a slight improvement in, in outcomes. We know that a lot of what course conveners do is clear to them, and sometimes the gap is making it clear to others. So you might have, for example, quite clear ideas about the goals and standards of your course, but how well shared are these by all members of the teaching team? To what extent are you all on the same page? Um, to what extent have you clarified roles and responsibilities and the expectations of the teaching team. And is, is that something that's agreed to and shared across the teaching team? And so you can see if you go down that list, 
the key notion there is making what might be implicit in your head as a convener explicit and shared by the teaching team. And probably the most important one on that list is establishing for the team how they will communicate with each other and share information across the teaching period. It's teaching teams that have got into the habit of connecting and staying, staying connected and sharing information that enable all the other stuff to happen. So that's kind of a key bit in that list, establishing effective and information sharing processes for the team. Because that builds a mutual understanding and that's fundamentally one of the key things about effective preparation and empowered team. So think about that list in terms of uh, a list of possibilities for what you might do to help a team prepare itself. Now, we, as we said from the research earlier, well-prepared well teaching teams lead to more effective course, courses being managed. Uh, and we can see then that what flows from that are very similar ideas during the course of the semester that are reflected early in the preparation tasks. And so a course team leader uh, will have a more effective te teaching team and a more effective course if they set up a relational culture where they signal uh, how approachable and available they are to the teaching team members with a leadership frame of reference. You know, how are you um, treating yourself as a leadership resource for the rest of the team? More importantly though, uh, apart from that general foundation of being relationally available and supportive, what, what our teaching team members have told us in, in the structured feedback from our research is that uh, if the course doesn't make sense to them and the bits of the course aren't aligned in their own head, they have a lot of trouble explaining that to the students. So getting a shared map, if you like, of how the course makes sense to the teaching team is a great investment in helping the teaching team then communicate that to students. So that coherent alignment between the various elements of a course are quite, quite critical. And generally speaking, we know from student feedback that when a teaching team isn't coordinated throughout a semester, students start to get very different perceptions of what the course is about, depending on who they might have as a tutor or a lab demonstrator. So getting a shared, consistent and coherent course view is fundamentally, fundamentally important for the student experience, but fundamentally depends on how well we coordinate our teaching team. Most important stuff. We've also uh, asked our teaching team members generally across the university how they would evaluate or rate uh, how well uh, they felt the, their course teams were prepared and how well their course teams were managed over the semester. About half of the teaching team members thought that they were, received satisfactory levels of support in this regard. But a good third of us, a good third of, the, of those said, look, not really satisfactory at all, large gaps in, in what was required. So, and, but, a, but, a, but a good fifth said it was excellent. So there's a bit of a spread there. And I guess the focal question is, not to worry about that general spread, but to ask yourself the question, what do you think your team members might say about the quality of your preparation and management of the teaching team? So that's a reflective question. Um, so we've talked about preparation, we've talked about management. The other two elements of the big four, which I'll only lightly touch on, but are quite important is, and quite important from the feedback of teaching team members, is number one, formative quality improvement. Uh, teaching teams really value uh, formative ongoing processes throughout the course that provide feedback on how the team is going but also on how the course is going and that involves the the team as a whole in a process of formative quality development uh, which is, gives a richer richer set of, set of data to uh, the course uh, leader apart from just the end of semester uh, evaluations and the other area that teaching team members value is opportunities for professional development and that doesn't mean just having workshops for teaching team members it means opportunities for you know, reflection on difficult students, uh, opportunities for peer observation if that's available, uh, and just generally a reflective conversation as a team about how they're, how they're going. So that, they're the big four, and, and, and what, why are these important? Because we know that they will deliver uh, positive outcomes. Generally speaking, um, we know that um, professional development and course improvement are the aspects of teaching teams that are probably least satisfactorily evaluated. Um, nearly. Uh, 40% of, of teaching teams felt this was an area of, of, of a gap that they would like to see closed. Um, and so I think there's some possibilities us for do some improvement in that area. Once again, the reflective question is, what do you think your team members might say about that? So what the research is, is telling us that we, we, we do, we undertake these activities, we'll be more likely to get an effective course, uh, perceptions of an effective team, and generally a, high, a more satisfied uh, learning environment. Takeaway messages, they're really quite simple and I think we've covered them, but fundamentally 
Teamwork's a bit of work, but really it is a worthwhile investment because we know from the research that if you undertake even some of those key tasks, uh, you're going to improve the quality of your students' learning and their satisfaction uh, with, with not only the course but also your teaching. So consider that as an investment worth making. Thank you.